والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم ان الحمد لله احمده واستعين واستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين أبريز الله سبحانه وتعالى and he's the only one worthy of praise I seek his help, his guidance and his forgiveness I believe in him and I trust him I seek refuge in Almighty Allah from the evil of our passions. Indeed, whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides him to Al-Islam, no one can mislead him after Allah. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him astray, no one can guide him after Allah. I testify openly that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah Rabbil Alameen. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and the seal of all the prophets. O Muslims, you must know that the best speech is the speech of Almighty Allah, which is the Quran. The best guidance is the course of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is his sunnah. The worst of all affairs is innovation and addition to the religion of Islam. Indeed, every addition to the religion of Islam will lead to hellfire. I adjure you as well as myself to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of your ability. Fear Allah, have the taqwa of Allah, and don't die unless you are in a state of Islam. After this, I greet you all with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty Allah be with you all. I'd like to welcome you all for continuation of reading from the book Riyadh al-Salihin. Garden of the Righteousness by Imam An-Nawawi Rahmatullahi Alayhi May Allah send mercy in his soul And inshallah this is a continuation to the previous uh, previous uh, chapter Related to propagation of backbiting And the order and the command of Allah Of guarding our tongue The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam In the hadith which he reported by Abu Huraira hadith number 1514 انه سمع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ان العبد لا يتكلم بالكلمة ما يتبين فيها يزل بها الى النار ابعد مما بين المشرق والمغرب متفق عليه this hadith is a so scary is so scary he can really if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with his fear and his taqwa this hadith is going to make us stop talking and we take maybe 10-15 minutes before we open our mouth to say something how? listen to the hadith the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said the slave servant of Allah can utter a word is not paying too much attention to it it doesn't know it's good or bad, it may be halal, haram. He say a word. He's not really, he's not curious. He's not, he's not conscious about what he's saying. He will say a word. But as a result of uttering a word, one word, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, and as a result of this, he will fall down into the fire of hell, 
deeper than the distance between the east and the west. You know how far the east away from the west? Do you know this? We fly, we fly from a country to country. And you know how fast is the aeroplane. And after this, they say, wow, this is four hours traveling. And this is not was from the east to the west, not even to the middle. You're going from a country to country. Can you imagine, take a moment, take a moment really and sit and think about the distance between the east and the west. So hellfire is so deep, so deep. We ask Allah to protect us from hellfire. That as a result of uttering a one single word, you are not really careful when you said it. The sin is so much will make you fall as a result of this word in hellfire as far as the distance between the east and the west. We ask Allah to give us his fear, his taqwa. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, this is so scary. One single word, you can, it can make you go to hell fire so far, so deep, as far east from the west. I heard that some of the righteous people, they used to put like a rock or a small stone. their mouth to become like an obstacle in their mouth they don't talk so when he want to say something he will have to take this rock out of his mouth and this to give him a chance and a moment to think what I'm going to say is it right or wrong is it halal or haram am I saying something pleasing to Allah or displeasing to Allah Subhanallah. May Allah bless us with his fear. Is this all what I can say? And I hope that Allah will bless me with it, inshallah, so we can be careful of what we say. Also, the hadith 15:15 and hadith 15:16 that the Prophet وسلم, is showing us this meaning in different words. But let's go to hadith number 15 and 17. When Sufyan uh, ibn Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قلت يا رسول الله حدثني بأمر أعتصم به قال قل ربي الله ثم استقم قلت يا رسول الله ما أخوف ما تخاف علي فأخذ بلسان نفسه ثم قال هذا Subhanallah. Abdullah ibn Sufyan asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam O Allah his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell me of something to which I may remain steadfast. O Prophet of Allah tell me about something that I can hold to it that it can be a means of protection for me. Teach me about something in Islam, but something so great that it became a means of protection for me. Something I may remain steadfast. The Prophet وسلم, said, Say, Allah is my Lord and live up to it. Live up to it. We say la ilaha illallah. We believe in Allah. But what does it mean? Amen to billah. Is a big word. Is a have depth in our life, behavior, discipline. Qul amen to billah. Summa staqib. After they say, live according to this word of la ilaha illallah. Say, O oh, Prophet of Allah, what is the, the fearest thing, that what the most thing that you're afraid for me, that it can be danger for me? The Prophet ﷺ hold his tongue, his own tongue, and say, huh, this, this, be careful. Watch for your tongue. 
Hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam number 15, 18 in the book of Riyadh al-Salihin. And Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la tukthiru al-kalam bi ghayri zikrillah. Fa inna kathrat al-kalam bi ghayri zikrillah ta'ala qaswatun lil-qalbi wa inna ab'ad al-nas min Allahi al-qalb al-qasi. Watch, don't talk too much. Don't be a TV station. Don't be a broadcast station. Keep talking, talking, talking. Say, brother, we are not talking about something haram. Yes, you are not talking something haram. You giving stories and you talking about this and that. But the Prophet say, don't talk a lot without the remembrance of Allah. So let's most your talk about Allah, about His Messenger, about the Deen, because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying. Too much talk is not involved. The remembrance of Allah is going to harden your heart. It's going to make your heart hard. Hard. And the farther distant is the day of judgment from Allah, the hard heart. May Allah soften our hearts with the remembrance of Allah and make our tongue wet with his remembrance at all times. عقبة ابن عامر may Allah be pleased with him said to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم قلت يا رسول الله من نجاة O Prophet of Allah tell me how I can be safe how I can be secure what is salvation O Messenger of Allah the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said أمسك عليك لسانك وليسعك بيتك وابك على خطيئتك رواه الترمذي Narrated Uqba ibn Amir, may Allah be pleased with him. I ask the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how can salvation be obtained? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, control your tongue. Control your tongue. Keep to your house and weep over your sins and mistakes. Stay away from the public as much as you can if you could not benefit them. Because when you are mingling and talking and talking, you will get in a lot of sins and you will be in trouble. Let's go for a break and continue, inshallah. Welcome back. We were talking about the importance of watching our tongue. And the last hadith that we were talking about the wasiyah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The advice that been given to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Uqba ibn Amir. Amsik alayka lisanak. Watch for your tongue. Keep to your house. And weep over your tongue previous sin try to stick to your home if you don't think you can help the Muslims outside so stay to your home so you don't get engaged in too much talking and you get yourself in trouble now to see the seriousness of the tongue again according to the Islam is saying the hadith that reported by Sa'id al-Khudri Abu Sa'id al-Khudri reported إذا أصبح ابن آدم فإن الأعضاء كلها تكفر اللسان. Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم is saying when the son of Adam gets up in the morning all limbs humble themselves before the tongue and say fear Allah for our sake because we are with you i.e. we will reward it or punish as a result of what you do. If you are straight, we will be straight. If you are crooked, we will be crooked. Whatever you say, 
people go say back to you whatever you say people can react as a result of this the hand will be involved everything will be involved so every day this meeting happen this conference between the limbs and your tongue telling the tongue watch fear Allah see where you're going to lead us so we can see the seriousness of this matter uh, hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which in the end say uh, this is a long hadith but the end say وَهَلْ يَقُبُّ النَّاسَ فِي النَّارِ عَلَى وُجُوهِهِمْ إِلَّا حَصَائِدِ أَلْسِنَتِهِمْ Nothing make people nothing make people thrown into hell fire on their faces other than the result of their tongue again we understand that all these things happening from a small part the size or the length of one of your fingers not your arm not your legs subhanallah we really need to do something about our tongue okay i'm starting with myself inshallah but we have to remember that we have a very danger part in our body and we need to have control over it now as we stated before that this chapter concerning watching the tongue as well as backbiting and here is the prophet sallallahu in hadith which he reported by abu huraira do you know what is backbiting the companions may allah be pleased with this him they said uh, Al-Ghiba, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he asked them, they said, Allah and his messenger knows best. He said, ذِكْرُكَ أَخَاكَ بِمَا يَكْرَهُ Talking about your Muslim brother, and when brother means brother or sister, okay? Talking in the absence of your Muslim brother or sister with something that they may dislike. They said, O Prophet of Allah, أَفَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ كَانَ فِي أَخِي مَا أَقُولُ what about what I'm saying about my brother is true. I'm not lying. The Prophet ﷺ said, it said to him, what if my Muslim brother is as I say? He said, if he, if he is actually as you say, then that is backbiting. But if that is not in him, that is slander. Don't talk about your Muslim brother. Okay? Doesn't matter this is true or not true. Don't talk about a Muslim brother in his absence or a Muslim sister. If a Muslim leaves him alone because one of two and both of them are evil and sin for you. That what you're saying is true and this is a backbiting. What you're saying it maybe is not true and this will be what? A slander. So you never can be safe talking about your Muslim brother in his absence. The Prophet sallallahu in khutbah al the last fill where uh, khutbah is the last hajj, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa saying, inna dima'akum wa amwalakum wa a'radakum haramun alaykum ka hurmati yawmikum hadha fi shahrikum hadha fi baladikum hadha ala hal ballagd na'am qad ballagd ya rasulallah صلى الله عليه وسلم وجزاك الله عنا وعن الأمة خيرا حديث it is in the collection of Imam al-Bukhari that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم saying indeed verily your blood your property your honor are as secret as the country of Mecca or the city of Mecca the month of the Hijjah and also the day of Arafah. Everything belong to the Muslim. Everything belong to the Muslim. is sacred. The honor of the Muslim. The blood of the Muslim. The property of the Muslim. You have no right to touch it. You have no right to harm a Muslim. By any means. And some of those Muslims that get involved. And participate. Enroll in armies by Muslims or non-Muslims, and they do what? They go killing other Muslims. How you can do this? You say, I'm only doing what I've been commanded. There is nothing called being commanded. You've been commanded by Allah before anybody else. 
Fear Allah in the property of the Muslims. Fear Allah in the honor of the Muslims. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the blood and the money and the property of the Muslims. Look to what's happening nowadays. Look in Palestine. Muslims killing other Muslims. Cousins killing a cousin. Look in Somali. Tribes from Muslims killing other tribes. Look in the bombing happening in Iraq. Look what is going. Muslims are killing Muslims. For what reason? Because oil? Because a miles of lands because flag because what where are you going to go how are you going to escape from Allah in the day of judgment you should be have the fear of Allah and if you been enrolled in any kind of army that attacking or doing something to other Muslims with no just cause can be justified by the book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you need to repent to Allah now and you need to quit now and you need to cry and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you for what he did it is haram, it is haram, it is haram the property of the Muslims, the blood of the Muslims the honor of the Muslims is sacred like Mecca, like the Hijjah, like the day of Arafah and Indeed, the Kaaba is secret and honored by Allah, but indeed the blood of the Muslim more secret than the Kaaba. The blood of the Muslim more secret than the Kaaba. One time, the Prophet ﷺ was talking. You know, jealousy happened between co-wives. I don't know how many of you have co-wives, co but you know. It's almost started to disappear about multi-wives and things like this, which it is. The sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is not our subject. But Aisha said, حَسْبُكَ مِنْ صَفِيَّةَ كَذَا وَكَذَا بعض الرؤى say that means that قَصِيرَة is saying, uh, like, who is this Safiya keep talking about it? You know, Aisha, she's the mother of the believer. May Allah be pleased with her. But she loves the Prophet ﷺ and she gets jealous. Say, oh, 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 what was this Safiya talking about? She's like, like a short lady. She tried to say something about, oh, it's no big deal. The Prophet ﷺ told her, لَقَدْ قُلْتِ كَلِمَ لَوْ مُزِجَتْ بِمَاءِ الْبَحْرِ لَغَيَّرَتْ أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم. Indeed, you had uttered a word. is sufficient to corrupt, to change the whole ocean. It's so serious. One word. Aisha said it. In absence of Safiya. And the Prophet saying about a word. We sit down in the phone sometimes for half an hour. Talking about so and so and this community and this imam and this. Subhanallah, what are we doing? And the Prophet say one single word is so serious. And he said, وَحَكِيتُ لَهُ إِنسَانًا فَقَالْ مَا أُحِبُّ أَنِّي حَكِيتُ إِنسَانًا وَأَنَّ لِي كَذَا وَكَذَا he said, she further said, I imitated a person before the Prophet ﷺ. He said, I don't like that. I should imitate someone even if I am paid. In return, such and such amount. You know these people that, uh, what you call it, actors or uh, stars and they go in the theater and play and try to talk about this person and imitate this person we could not like saying you understand you know so and so the way how he look you understand he start to imitate the people this is this is so serious in islam you could not make it as a joke you could not make it by any means you try to make it fun make it fun of our people when oh you know so and so is the way how he walk he doing like this you understand you know his beard is doing like this or his you understand no 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 all these things is wrong all these things is not islamically this is not islamic behavior we are muslims and we have to learn how to be muslim not only salah we have to learn how to have salah and all have manner and behavior of muslims Listen to this hadith that the Prophet ﷺ is showing the seriousness of this matter. The Prophet ﷺ in Laylat al Isra wal Mi'raj. In the night of Isra and Mi'raj. What's happening in Isra and Mi'raj? It's a journey that happened to the Prophet ﷺ that he went from Mecca to Jerusalem. 
and after this ascended to the seventh heaven, he saw different scenes. He saw different scenes. And one of the scenes that the Prophet wasallam saw during this journey, I saw a group of people who were scratching their chests and their face with their copper nails. I asked, who are those people, O Jibril? Jibril salam said, those are the people who ate the flesh of others. هؤلاء الذين يأكلون لحوم الناس ويقعون في أعراضهم. So now, this is matter is serious. In the day of the judgment, you will see the scratches in your faces and your fair chest as a result of talking about the people in their absence. Be careful. Stay away of talking about Muslims. Fear Allah in their property, in their honor, and in their blood. May Allah help us all to behave properly according to Islam. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Muhammad Saad Adli, from Columbia, South Carolina. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.